Hello everyone, my guest today is Jerzy Biernacki. Jerzy Hello. is the head of operations at Miquido, a company specializing in mobile and web development solutions. And despite his current function, uh, Jerzy is still an active uh, technologist and active in software development, uh, focusing uh, largely on AI related uh, issues. Mm. Uh, you worked for major uh, clients like uh, PZU, uh, Aviva, uh, Play. Jerzy holds a, a PhD from AGH, uh, University of Science and Technology in Krakow. Uh, so, uh, very pleased to have you, Jerzy, today on the show. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thanks. I'm pleased to be here. So, because your practice encompasses both uh, mobile development and AI, hence my first question. How will the development, the current boom in generative AI influence mobile development? Okay. Um, I, I think what we will see and what we are already seeing is that more and more companies actually embrace generative AI to build and release new generative AI-based features in their mobile applications because things that were simply just impossible or too expensive to implement just a few months ago are now easy to implement. And one of my favorite examples is e-learning or education technology. Uh, the main problem I've seen with this is uh, that to, to make students really understand the material that they they want to learn and not just learning how to solve certain types of exercises. When we compare it to a, a good teacher, a uh, good teacher would ask students why do they think, how they think, and uh, would ask them what would happen if something else uh, uh, happens. And uh, in this way, they ensure that students really understand uh, the concept behind the material, not only how to solve certain type of exercise. And this is the key change that we can now offer uh, thanks to Generative AI. And uh, some companies like Khan Academy or Duolingo already released their Generative AI based e-learning assistance. And uh, we could have also implemented uh, similar features for one of our edtech clients. So it is already happening. Uh, but that's just one example, one industry. We can build amazing features uh, with Gen AI, for example, the personalized onboarding process, uh, replace FAQs with an assistant or build custom knowledge bases. We can provide mm, specific advice uh, in the app based on, on the user's data that we already have in the application. Um, recently, Amazon announced uh, the release of uh, summarizer for customer reviews uh, on, their, on their website, which is also a, a really good uh, feature. Uh, and in the productivity apps that we use every day, we can have uh, uh, calculations generated, analyzes, uh, charts, tables. Uh, also, we can generate uh, music uh, for the user to enjoy based on their mood or generate, for example, an avatar for the user if they don't want to provide their photo in the, in the onboarding process and still have something uh, personalized uh, for the user. And you can automate also some repetitive tasks uh, that uh, and that would increase productivity. Uh, and I mean tasks like data entry, image processing, and text analysis. And these all can be uh, significantly uh, improved and uh, enhanced by by generative AI. And uh, also in gaming, uh, we can generate uh, character lines or uh, quests or levels, uh, all made simpler by using generative AI. Um, does it mean that uh, now a software development company like yours uh, is a kind of, you know, uh, matching 
different puzzles from different uh, different vendors of Gen AI and creating uh, an app out of it in a much more automated way? Well, well, not entirely, right? Uh, but uh, software development it was always about matching different puzzles and using different solutions to build your own solution that would uh, meet certain business uh, needs. So, so yeah, not, right now we're matching different Gen AI based solutions and models to to build features that uh, uh, that are building new experiences for for the users. How it will influence? Uh, uh, I mean, Gen AI, Gen AI. How how will it will influence UX, or maybe will will the role of a development company in creating UX increase? Because let's say the puzzles you have from from different vendors, but somebody has to you know put it all together and also uh, make it uh, make it accessible, make make it user friendly. Uh, yeah. So when it comes to user user experience, uh, we can build a whole new user experiences, <laughs> and uh, what they all definitely have in common is the further personalization for the user and possibilities to actually generate new interactions. So if you imagine uh, maybe an uh, investing app and uh, in with generative AI, we don't necessarily have to predefine all possible charts and analyzes to display for the user in the app in the interface. We can just uh, add a feature that would generate them generate these charts uh, based on users' prompts and requests, and that definitely influences how user would interact with the app, and uh, the whole user interface can become uh, cleaner. And uh, in the app, getting rid of, for example, FAQs, or and getting instead answering the actual questions of the users and in basically no time is like a, a game changer it's just such a simple thing but it can change a lot or like in e-commerce not having to read through hundreds of reviews of the of the products and just to get a summary of that in a, in a few moments is it's a big thing uh for example you can sum up videos and articles in three bullet points just to make user uh, find what they need in uh, much uh, shorter time. And uh, basically, it's also about efficiency. And many things are just made much easier for for everyday users like who are not professionals at certain uh, tasks like uh, creating content, creating videos, uh, retouching photos, and uh, but also creating like emails uh, or writing posts on social media or uh, reports in uh, at work. So yeah, I think it's it's all about supporting humans and uh, human creativity. Uh, where's the place for soft software developers in, in all this world? Because uh, some people say, you know, Gen AI will take off <laughs> the jobs uh, uh, from, from the software developers. Uh, maybe part of it. Uh, definitely, yes. Uh, but uh, still somebody has to, uh, you know, uh, connect all the dots all the all the tools to build uh, solutions so i'm not afraid that uh, software developers will not be needed anymore uh, but it can be definitely very useful and it's already used widely for for coding uh, if i remember correctly like if a few months ago, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella spoke that about 27,000 uh, companies already are paying for the enterprise licenses of uh, GitHub Copilot, which is basically the, probably the most uh, popular tool uh, for coding using generative AI. And there are many alternatives for GitHub Copilot that are uh, right now uh, developed and uh, released. Uh, 
Meta is reportedly ready to launch its own code generating AI model named Code Llama. And it's basically an open source alternative to GitHub Copilot and uh, the OpenAI's Codex model. And uh, yeah, these tools just aim to make developers' lives easier and uh, to uh, to to help them in everyday everyday tasks. And uh, some developers started using ChatGPT, and that's definitely not recommended in the in this browser form because it's like basically handling your code to OpenAI, but you can still use uh, ChatGPT through your own Microsoft Azure instance. So that way it's easier. And ChatGPT, uh, like even such a general tool can work as a mentor for code completion, for optimization and uh, and explaining certain uh, fragments of, of code can provide insights into the design and structure of the code and can help identify areas that may need refactoring or review. And it can also generate uh, documentation uh, based on the on the source code. Uh, there are also other tools like, uh, for example, Mintlify that can be used to automatically document the code or the tool with a funny name like uh, what the diff and it's basically the tool that helps in code review. And it's a tool that enables teams to write uh, better pull requests and uh, basically commenting on the on the source code is made, made much uh, much easier. Uh, you can just describe the, the, the general changes that, that you want and uh, it will suggest uh, the changes within the pull request and generate summaries of pull requests just for the uh, for the whole team to to enjoy and just uh, make these uh, tasks that are repetitive uh, that are maybe not uh, very um, creative but still necessary so it can just help developers with with that uh, with that kind of tasks uh how would would, would it influence uh, developers job market? Uh, would it be more difficult probably to, to become a software developer because junior tasks uh, will be performed by Gen, Gen AI so it would be let's say more difficult to start because you compete with Gen AI uh, on the other hand would people with uh, large experience and this kind of you know uh, six stance of, of creativity be more in uh, in demand because uh, it's it's often said that uh, you know uh, a very creative and, and a very open-minded uh, developer works for two or for three yeah so um, actually i think it depends uh I don't think it will be harder for for new people to to learn coding and then start their career in in software development. It is true that uh, Gen AI based tools will act basically as uh, like junior assistants uh, or like assistants with the knowledge of a junior software developer uh, for the senior developers, but uh, we still need. Uh, we still need developers, right? We still need new talent to to join the the teams. And actually, for the people joining uh, as junior developers, it uh, they could make uh, their job easier and maybe uh, make the the learning curve slightly uh, slightly easier for 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 developers to join. Well, it's, it depends on on the point of view, right? Uh, it's uh, it definitely will impact the the skills needed uh, to to develop applications because uh, it can be more the prompting would be important uh, and and, uh, and how you would interact with these tools and uh, yeah, like right now. 
or in the in the previous years, we've seen that many developers were <laughs> commonly using uh, tools and and uh, internet and things like Stack Overflow. Oh, well, they can use uh, Gen AI based tools to uh, to write that are not really connected with business logic. They are just uh, uh, they are just code that is the structure of the of the code that needs to be repeated in a few places for the the whole project and uh, writing it takes some time so you can just uh, generate it using uh, generative ai and that makes it easier both for junior and senior developers and it will help make the whole project more uh more uh, consistent in in the structure what fascinates me is uh, will we have this kind of iphone moment with Gen AI now, because uh, iPhone and the introduction of smartphones uh, also created a new market for for mobile apps, which didn't exist before, or not to that extent. That after smartphones, uh, uh, yeah, I, definitely, it's like uh, it's like uh, like fourteen years ago, Apple coined this. Uh, this slogan like there is an app for that and it basically was uh uh the like it was the the main uh this this uh the slogan was basically the this it marked the mobile revolution in the in the industry and it was really true. Right now, we see a, a, an era of like there's an AI for that. There, are, there are tools like Spring Up, like Mushrooms for different uh, uh, different tasks. And these AI tools will help uh, in many ways in, in many industries. So, I think it's uh, kind of similar. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's amazing. Uh, do you think that let's say there will be uh, certain markets for certain AI uh, vendors, like uh, one for Llama, one for ChatGPT, uh, same as we have with iPhone and Android markets? Yes, I think so. Uh, well, yeah, it it can happen. Uh, definitely, like they, these companies are uh, right now, big companies are uh, fighting to get the best position in this new reality, and uh, they they want to promote their own tools uh, because they know that uh, it can influence the, the their success uh, in the years to come, and if they position themselves as one of the few that will be commonly used by the by the users that they they're on the on the better position for for the years to come like like with google and uh and web search right uh, it be, basically became a monopolist in in this area uh because it went exactly uh at the right moment with their products so yeah do you see any low hanging fruits for for businesses in applying AI, or maybe different different low hanging fruits for smaller ones and for bigger ones? Mm. Well, definitely, Gen AI is changing the the whole whole market. And if you remember, like industrial revolution, the, like embarked by steam, coal, and mechanization, it's kind of similar because these innovations don't merely don't merely affect the industries they transform societies and economies and individual lives and uh, now like centuries later uh we stand uh, at the at the brink of new equally radical transformation and this uh, this uh, won't primarily affect like the manual laborers but it's targeting the intellectual workforce and office professionals and it's it's encompassing all the entire uh, white collar sector, and uh, it's it's poised to redefine the professional landscape and the very concept of work. And it's right now it's not merely a possibility; it's it's the reality. We are already integrating tools uh, that are based in Gen AI in our lives and and work, 
uh, and as for the low hanging fruits, uh, like the easiest things to implement are probably like some internal knowledge bases uh, that can be uh, replacing the the current ones based on like uh, Confluence or or SharePoints or other uh, intranets. Uh, you can get rid of FAQs on the on the websites and in the apps. Uh, we can enhance like onboarding process for new employees. Uh, we can uh, definitely enhance customer support processes. And not only the, I don't only mean the customer facing bots that answer questions, but also assistance for the customer support team that provides responses for for the support employees uh, so that they don't have to come up with everything themselves to look up for for uh, for the answers in the company uh, materials and don't have to write them all just they can have some some already uh, prepared for them and just review it and, and send it or say it if it's like a live call uh, companies can use this tool to boost the productivity uh, if they if their employees use these tools in everyday uh, tasks and these tools can be like text editors, spreadsheets, or email clients, because like creating uh, presentations with a prompt is possible already. Uh, creating reports based on on data it's also possible already. Uh, we can uh, we can just you know instead of using some uh, help in uh, and looking how to write certain formula in in uh, Excel, we can ask uh, ChatGPT or some plugin to to generate the formula for us. Uh, we can uh, automatically create meeting notes and summarize them and create. Uh, uh, so this is all becoming the new standard of work and we can just use the tools that are available. Um, and also for the marketing, as uh, all a very prominent example of Gen AI revolution, because like there are tools that help in to generate inspirations, creating articles, uh, posts uh, and, and even generating video ads. It's it's actually amazing. Uh, for yeah, I, uh, sorry for interrupting, but I think that you mentioned some some very important point uh, that we are um, you know starting to work with an external agent, and this absolutely changes uh, the idea of work. And it's like if we if we think deeper about it, it's like that we need to realize what we are really good at and what we are really creative at, and what is our value, because it's actually the the very instance of the idea that we are producing. There is it is produced by by the machine. So for instance, if you want to write a, a blog post or an article, which I often do, uh, I do use ChatGPT, but it's, let's say I, I make a plan of it. Let's say, I, first I, I need to create an idea of what I want to, what, what I want to say, mm. and then, you know, make points in my head uh, and then probably put them on, uh, on the document, on the paper. And then, you know, I start, you know, asking chat GPT prompting. It's not always that I do it, but sometimes, of, of course, I do. And I think this relates to, to every creative work. Uh, and I'm wondering whether we are ready for it. Well, I, I use it as well. Uh, it can help, like, to, to make... Uh creative work easier it won't replace humans I, I think it's uh it's like a boost to creativity in in my opinion uh but, I agree. it just, yeah, just I, the first you have to do the, the creative work oh uh, yes or or ask uh, for inspiration and and be a, a critic of the of the output that you get uh, I, I like this approach personally because for me it's very easy to be a, a, a critic. Uh, I have like like a critical approach to to what I get. So yeah, but your question was regarding uh, it was about whether we are ready for it, right? Uh, whether we are ready for it, because 
we it pushes us to being much more creative and much more disciplined in our creativity. Mm, I think, well, I think there's a, mm, some people are ready for it. Some people are not, uh, depends on, on their approach and uh, how progressive they are, I guess. Uh, I met uh, many people I tried to, uh, try to tell them how uh, Gen AI is changing my work and how they it could improve their work, but they were really not convinced, uh, especially in the creative sector, uh, people who, who write uh, books uh, or uh, create music. Uh, these uh, artists are often like, they feel threatened, I, I think, uh, that uh, the, these uh, kind of uh, creative uh, creative jobs will be, um, because like everyone can right now create, uh, create um, music or article in a, in a few few moments, we can, we can see the rise of uh, of articles or or music or or many many kind of content that is generated and it's like from their perspective it's like it's not art anymore it's like it's uh it's just a creation uh made by a machine and it's, uh, from their perspective it's uh it's a threat because uh it will devaluate their their work like if we see a, a lot of uh like uh because it's usually not the best stuff, right? It's like the, uh, it might not be a, a, a crap, but it's, uh, it's definitely not the, 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 the best, uh, the best art. If it's not, if it's just done in a, in a few moments and just generated, uh, but it's only I, art, I think it's everything. I think it's, uh, it's also uh, yeah. proud. At the end yes. of the day, if the idea behind is not coming from a human being who thought this out, uh, if it's just, you know, putting something into Gen AI, it's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think uh, the, some some are really ready for it and they embrace it and, and use it to, uh, to actually... Uh, enhance their creativity and uh, they then don't allow it to like generate and uh, and just release what what is generated they just use it as an inspiration or or uh, use it to to basically uh enhance some parts of their work but not not releasing it uh as as it comes out so i, I think it's uh not everyone is ready, but I, I think the we will get there. And uh, I don't believe that it will totally devaluate the, the artistic work because, like, the art will will still for, for itself, and and I think people will still value the what what is. Uh, really unique and uh, and yeah so but if you can create something unique and something valuable using gen ai then why not uh i, I don't i don't see it as a bad thing uh yeah do you see a difference in approach between uh, startups and larger organizations in in adoption of gen ai well a, a, a lot of companies talk about implementing generative AI in this way or another, like many, uh, definitely startups are usually the, the first ones to, to adopt new technology, right? Because they are uh, fast, they're agile, they, they want to be competitive on the market. And Gen AI definitely gives them this competitive advantage they need. Uh, enterprises are usually slower, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's just because they are big organizations that have their structures, their processes, and to change any process takes time. So they are slower to adapt. Some are, uh, like in some organizations, like 
people just start using Genii based tools because they know that it enhances their work. Some organizations reacted with uh, banning uh, using certain uh, Genii based tools, and they have valid concerns like regarding ChatGPT and uh, the privacy of the data because like everything you send to to this public uh, instance of ChatGPT can be used to further uh, teach the the model and uh, to can be analyzed by uh, by OpenAI, right? So it's not uh, safe to to send uh, sensitive data there. But you can create your own tools based on the uh, based on the models that are available. You can use the APIs that are uh available and they are uh they are safe right they can you can send data there and it won't be used to uh to uh to and it won't be analyzed in any way by uh by these companies so um, so i think uh, we need to catch this wave and there are basically two ways to to do it versus to, and they can be combined, right? But the first thing is to, you can use the existing tools uh, that like research what is available and just use it. And you can build build your own tools uh, based on the, the models that are released and the APIs that are available. And I think there are many, uh, many reasons for companies to consider building their own tools. First is, uh, I think the most important is that you can have greater control over the over the solutions because you're not dependent on the on the tool and uh, it's especially important with Gen AI because the output generated by uh, generative AI is not necessarily repeatable, so it's not easy to say whether it's working or not because it's not it, it, you cannot predict exactly what the output would be. So creators of a tool can change something in their model and the solution might just stop working, right? And you might be not aware of that uh, because you would need a uh, actual user to or actual human to to spot it. Uh, also, the there is an aspect of competitive advantage because tailored solutions provide uh, provide uh, certain functionalities that are unique to the, to your business and uh, this can lead to innovation and differentiation from other uh, companies on the market and uh, and basically set your company apart from your competition who are using the same of the shelf tools and it's also aligned with your business goals right so custom solutions can be designed to align precisely with your uh, needs, uh, your workflows, your solution architecture, and you can ensure that it supports your specific needs rather than just force uh, the company to adapt to pre-built tools. And it can be because of that, it can be much uh, more efficient and scalable. And more often than not, it's worth uh, to seek the assistance of of software houses like Miquida to to build these. Tools. Uh, because that way you can a team of experts quality implemented similar solutions many times over. And for me, it's quicker and safer to do it that way. Definitely. Uh, yes, thank you so much for, for this discussion. Uh, it's a, it's a, on one hand, a, a great blueprint of um, how to implement Gen AI, especially in the area of coding. But I guess it's it's always better to go to an expert who, who has done it many times over. And as you said, on the other hand, uh, my biggest takeaway from the discussion is that like there was there was an app for that. Now it's an, an AI for that. And so I think that this market will burst. Uh, and I also agree that let's say kind of hybrid uh, in-house solutions will be will be the most common in large enterprises. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for for having you and hope to, to have you in the future. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much for listening to Sherpa Search on Tech. 
If you have enjoyed the show, please subscribe to our show wherever you listen. Thanks again. The Sherpa Search on Tech podcast is a production of Sherpa Search, an executive search firm specializing in the tech industry, helping hire the right people for expert and managerial positions, and advising how to build and develop long-lasting, high-performing IT teams. If you would like to learn more, reach out to us at maciej.szczerba at sherpasearch.tech or visit our website sherpasearch.tech. See you next time. Thank you.